episode is done. Well, of course, now that everyone has smartphones, you can just check online. Yeah. Uh, Superman, uh, the Grand Morrison bro. Welcome to At The Table with Destiny Comics. Alright, we're recording. Oh. Oh no. Mm-hmm. And so she said... That was the wrong drink. Smooth. I... You moved... It was here. <laughs> <laughs> I took a drink of somebody's tea. Sorry. I didn't have tea. There's tea. You, you had your lemon stuff. I had root beer with lemon in it. It's very weird. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I, I didn't have tea. It was like, what was that? Okay, okay. okay. I was going to put a lemon slice in Coke because that, you know, tastes pretty good. And then when I put the lemon in, I was like, I don't want Coke. We don't have a root beer at work. I'll get root beer. But I kept the lemon in it. So now it just tastes weird. But I like it. So, so I screw, like it. Screw all y'all. <laughs> It's my house. <laughs> my house, my rules. And I say we drink root beer. <laughs> With lemon wedges. With lemon wedges. <laughs> Anyone who says otherwise, well, you can just go outside right now. You die. You die outside. So, um, well, if you listened to the last uh, podcast, the Doctor Who um, at the table episode with us rambling on and on about the Doctor... We plugged the Black Friday sale at IE Comics and Games, and we did have a Black Friday sale. <laughs> um, it it rained on us. We got rained out. Yeah. yeah. My feet are still cold. Yeah. <laughs> so we were planning on doing a live podcast from the event. Uh, Robert Robinson, who drew Batman, was there. Although he wasn't there as a uh, an official artist, uh, normally he's there signing, but uh, he was there helping his wife um, sell her jewelry, which you know is kind of honorable if you're an established creator mm-hmm. in the industry. You know, gonna go out and help your wife try to sell jewelry. Was it Roger or Robert? Um, Roger. Roger. Roger Robinson. That's what threw me off. Um, but uh, he's a pretty cool guy, and uh, he might be on a later episode of the podcast. Uh, I, I, I'd i love to just sit down and, and pick his brain, because he drew one of my favorite uh, runs of, of Batman with the uh, Azrael character. Ah, okay. So that was when he was doing it, and uh, we set up before him. And then he showed up, and he's done several IE events. So I assumed he would be inside signing or whatever. Mm. He started setting up a table next to me. I thought, oh, shit, we ain't going to sell anything. Mm. <laughs> That's good. Like, I got the Batman artist and everything. Like, I can't, I'm going to do sketches and <laughs> not sell a dang thing. So you want to introduce? Yeah, um, we'll, we'll start with uh, Melanie and go around. Okay. I'm Melanie Noel, editor and photographer of Ape and Pulp. I am Louis Lopez. I am an a uh, writer on Ape at Pulp. I do short stories and comic scripts. Haven't done poetry yet, but who knows? Maybe Superman will have a nice poetic flight one day. Mm. Uh, Brandon Noel, um, publisher and uh, founder of the company. And I'm Sarah Hadamio, and right now I'm just the friend. <laughs> a friend. You're a special guest star. Special <laughs> guest star. <laughs> um, special appearance by. <laughs> Oh, well, you might be uh, our, we'll, we'll probably lock it in soon, because um, you'll probably be the model for the um, volume uh, five, yeah. Ape at Pulp. Oh. So that, that'd be fun. Um, for that particular shoot, I'm hoping to do, because um, I want to do a cover shot, because I, I love the photo covers. We've only ever really did the, the one with mm-hmm. the photo of the desk, and then... Um, but I loved how that came out, mm-hmm. and I want to do a photo style cover like a classic pulp, mm-hmm. you know, um, the 1930s kind of cover, but f- do a, f- a photo shoot of it instead of uh, illustrating it. So number five will be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, we're probably going to get a uh, Christmas issue of Terrifyingly Gruesome Tales of Horror out. Ooh, that'll be fun. That will be fun. 
So um, we'll work on that. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's it's uh, that, that'll be a, f a fun little thing because I wanted to get a Christmas book out that I could, uh, you know, give away as a Christmas gift to my family. <laughs> it's like here, 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 here. I can't afford real gifts. <laughs> buy more stuff. Buy more stuff. At the buy more. At the buy more. Yeah, we've uh, started watching Chuck. I don't know if you're familiar with that show. Nope. Uh, it's a really great show. I, I really enjoy it. And it's, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a, a story about um, this guy who accidentally, um, his friend sends him an email. And his, he doesn't know, but his friend's a spy. And he sends um. an encrypted email. And it ends up downloading, like, this massive computer into his brain. And so because of that, He'll just flash on, like, he'll see, like, a bad guy, and he'll just have these flashes appear before his, you know, mind's eye, and he'll say, oh, my gosh, that guy's bad, blah, 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 you know, he's a smuggler or whatever he is, <laughs> and so these two other agents get sent to protect him, <laughs> you know, and make sure that nothing bad happens to him <laughs> until they can find a way to get the, you know, they call it the intersect, okay. and they, until they can get the intersect out of his brain, you know. It, it only got, what, like, two or three seasons or something? No, it no. got, like... Five. Four or five, yeah. At least, I think. Well, but I thought I thought that they killed it before its time for some reason. It, it might have been thought. killed, but on Netflix, there's like four or five seasons. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So and that's uh, how we started watching it was it popped up on Netflix. Okay. And I was like, I've heard about this. That was, yeah. that was Zachary Levi, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. And it's, it's really, what it really is, if you're a diehard nerd, is it's an updated version with spies of the great American hero. Oh, okay. That's, that's what it really is. Um, but, you know, I, I like it because uh, they have also um, Adam Baldwin oh, as nice. one of the characters, <laughs> as one of the agents protecting him. It's really hysterical yeah. to see him, you know, and um, it was one of those things where at first I didn't, because I, I missed opening credits, like yeah. I wasn't paying attention to it, and I'm like, why does he look so familiar? <laughs> like, oh, it's Jane! <laughs> it's Jane! Shiny! <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's the hero of Canton. <laughs> so... Uh. <laughs> it was really fun though. It's it's a good show, and yeah, I'm definitely enjoying watching it. So, <laughs> so well, um, along the note, why don't we talk about you know shows that we're getting into maybe too late or right with it or okay, yeah, shows that we can are... let's talk about shows that you know that we've you know joined we recently <laughs> became a fan of after yeah the the, after the fact. yeah. Uh, so for you know, like, Firefly. <laughs> Firefly. <laughs> That's everyone, though. That's everyone. Yeah. Unless you're the eleven people who watched it yeah. when it yeah. aired. I remember. I remember. I saw part of one episode as a child when it was on TV, and I didn't know what it was about because it was like halfway through, and then I didn't watch it again because I, I didn't understand what it was at the time. I was like midway through part of one episode, like in the middle of the season. I, I, I had mm -hmm. no idea what was going on. And now I shame myself for not actually watching it when it was on the air. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, it, it would have been hard. Like, uh, The Tick, was, they did the same thing mm. with the live-action version of The Tick. Kept changing nights without announcements. Yeah. And, and, so, and I, I love The Tick. I love that live-action uh, depiction of The Tick. La Mancha. La Mancha. Um, but I think uh, one show that I, I came to late was Fringe. Uh, um, we were at Comic Con a year or two ago, and we were in there for the Doctor Who panel, and Fringe was on before Doctor Who. And uh, normally, you just kind of tune out the other panels while yeah, you're sitting there waiting, sit on your phone. <laughs> waiting for for Doctor Who. But it was like eh, kind of interesting, so we started watching it, and it was like the internet buzz had already died for the show because they were entering their final season yeah. as we started season one, so. Now that we're up to that point, the, the, no one cares. The, yeah. the, the show... <laughs> like, we don't care about you anymore. I'm sorry, but uh, we're over it, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, you know, another show, like I said, we came into late. And, you know, we are really getting into, you know, a lot of things. Now a lot of the questions that they were asking make sense. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're like... Oh, are we ever going to, uh, you know, talk about, people talk about Folivia. I'm like, who's Folivia? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> that makes no sense. Hey, Folivia. <laughs> Who needs a kid, Folivia? <laughs> so. Um, one particular show that Sarah and I are just getting into now that has, I, either it's going to end the second season or the second season has already ended is Young Justice. 
Oh. We just watched the first, because the first two episodes are a double parter, mm-hmm. and we watched those, and they're great. I, I love it. Yeah, talk about a show that was canceled before its time. Um, Young Justice, really well done. Mm-hmm. It was pulled um, for two reasons. Ratings were kind of lacking, but it was still high ratings. It, it mm-hmm. wasn't, wasn't that bad. But one of the major reasons why they, they pulled the plug is Young Justice is a comic book that came out in 2000. And they kind of ended that series. Mm-hmm. Um, they did a, a fairly truthful adaptation of the comics, too, by the way. Uh, but with the new 52, which had happened a year before Young Justice aired, there was no Young Justice comic. So you had a, a cartoon that had no books to plug. Oh, it it it, ha- it served no dual function other than just being yeah. a good show. At least with Teen Titans, there were the Teen Titans books that were yeah. coming out monthly. My thought process was, well, just make a Young Justice book. I yeah. mean, the, there isn't yeah, a there's, fan base. There's no rule that says you can't do it that way. I mean, most people think book and then show or whatever. But I think it would, would have worked just as fine. I mean, mm-hmm. I think it would work better because if you go from comic book to TV show or, you know, any novel to movie, whatever, mm-hmm. you're going to have the diehard fans like, oh, they got this so wrong. They got this totally wrong, you know. And I think it's just much easier to go from the visual medium to, mm. you know, comic books and... And there know. were enough characters in that show, even not counting the Justice League, but the Young Justice heroes, and there were enough there to, to do just years and years of stories with. Yeah, my... I think you, the first episode of season two has Lobo in it. Oh, You know, it's just like, Lobo! <laughs> you know, Lobo, I love you! Uh, uh, Talk about a character. I love Lobo. He's, he's a so little, uh, fiction it's man crush on him. Oh, I do. He killed. They they did a uh, Christmas issue years ago where Lobo killed Santa Claus. Oh my god! And it was it was pretty intense. Easter Bunny hired Lobo to kill Santa Claus. Oh my god! What's wrong with the Easter Bunny? <laughs> He was one of like five hundred children. You know, uh, yeah, they get yeah. enough love. Yeah, middle child. Bunnies, it happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's pretty graphic too. Because typical the, middle child syndrome. <laughs> their depiction of Santa Claus is more like a uh, kingpin, drug lord. Oh god! You know, he's all ripped and he was fat, but he's still like all ripped. An army of slave elves. Oh, army <laughs> of slave elves, and and there's this great moment when Lobo's made it through the barricades of the North Pole. And this elf comes into the room with Santa, and he's bleeding, and he's all jacked up. And the elf goes, the naughtiest one of all has come, and then collapses. <laughs> you know, it was just awesome. How would it feel to be known as the naughtiest one of them the all? The naughtiest one of them all. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. DC doesn't do a lot of those, because uh, Lobo was a character who, yeah, it was grounded and centered in the DCU. But could go off and be very cynical and very dark. Yeah. And they don't really do those characters anymore. Even Lobo, uh, there, there, there is a new 52 Lobo title, but it's a clone of Lobo. Oh, it's not the original Lobo? It's not the original Lobo. So you have this, this clone of Lobo that's running around, and the real Lobo is in the background every once in a while in other titles. So the, we have to separate them. It's very important. It is very important because <laughs> Lobo has had cameos in Deathstroke and some of these, uh, you know, as the Lobo, mm-hmm. and they're rebooting, you know, this clone character of Lobo who's like almost a Bond. Does this like mean spine. they can officially have a Lobo versus Lobo book? They could. They could. <laughs> you know, real Lobo versus. The clone. The Lobo. clone. Well, they, I saw today in the comic shop that they had a Superboy comic where he's fighting his clone, like the son of Superman or something like that. Or... Um, well, I don't know if it was 52, but before that they did Superboy Prime, which goes back to the 80s. Mm-hmm. And they did this amazing um, Crisis on Infinite Earth. If you're a diehard comic book fan and you've never heard of uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth, pause this, Google Crisis... Read it, come back, because we're gonna spoil some stuff that happened. Spoiler! 30, that happened thirty years ago. Oh my gosh, come over the song for that. Spoiler! Spoiler! Spoilers! spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. Um, but it was this amazing story, and what happened was it served multiple functions in the comic book world because DC was publishing all these alternate version stories, all these Elseworld mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. 
And it got so polluted and so convoluted with Earth 2, Earth 3, and Earth 4 that you couldn't just pick up a Batman title and know if it was actually Batman. Yeah. And so they well, did... hell, that being said, I run into that problem now with the new 52. Really? There's kind of, sort of, like, I don't know where to begin. There's Batman, there's the Dark Knight, there's Detective the Comics, there's Batman Incorporated, there's Batman and Robin. How do I know which one is which? Um, well, or is it the same thing but different stories? Yeah, it's, it's all the same Batman, and they all tie into each other for the most part. Why, why not just... Why? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> the, the reason why is Batman's so popular, mm -hmm. he, he gets six Bat titles. Okay. Instead of giving, like, you know... Superman, I think, has four titles. Does each one focus on, like, a different aspect of him and his career kind of thing? Or? Yeah, okay. there were Batman and Robin was really well written, it was really well done, and it was just Batman and, and Damian Wayne until... Until he died. <laughs> until he died, and now they've been doing Batman, and then they've taken a red marker and crossed out the Robin. Oh, God, that's so sad. <laughs> and written in, it's a, a, a buddy team-up book, like almost like Batman Brave and the Bold. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so it's like, this week it's Batman and Red Hood. This week it's <laughs> Batman and Nightwing. This week, you know... yeah. I'm it, sorry, Robin, but that means you are null and void. Goodbye. Null and void. It makes his death even sadder. I know. Yeah, yeah. Like, Robin, Robin, Robin who? Should we put in new title? No, yeah, no, no, just cross it out. I know. Just cross it out. It's <laughs> really... <laughs> but seriously, it almost is that feel of, you know, oh, Damian Wayne, who? Who's yeah. that? Uh, okay. It, it brings it to the same sort of thing as, like, the Mike and Ike separation. <laughs> 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 like, this box is just Mike's. This box is just Ike's. There's no Damien anymore. <laughs> There's no Damien. <laughs> Mike and I, what? <laughs> the crisis, uh, though. Yeah, crisis is amazing because mm -hmm. you had all these alternate realities, and some of them are really well done. Uh, Huntress comes from the that original alternate reality. Oh, nice. Okay. The original Huntress was the daughter of Batman and Catwoman. Yeah. And then that, um, that's how it was when the TV show aired for a little. Yeah, time. yeah. It's a prey. That that's a, that was the original continuity on Earth Two. But the idea is when Huntress found out she was the son of Batman, she always knew she was the daughter of Catwoman. But Catwoman had died, you know, and she tries to find out who her dad was to, like, notify Dad, like, hey, Mom passed away, um, and finds out Dad was Bruce Wayne, Batman. And then when she goes to confront Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne's been dead for years. And it's just Robin. <laughs> Robin's the, you know, in, he's, I love this alternate world because in that future, Robin never became Nightwing. He's a grown ass man in the Robin costume <laughs> with gray hair. Oh my God. Wow. Um, I love that costume because it's a How little. never growing up? <laughs> it's a little different. It's a little different. Pants or like Pants. tights? <laughs> it, it's still, it's tights, but it's, it's. It's like yellow. The costume was more yellow and red. And, okay. But it, it was, um, there was some green in there. But it was definitely a Robin costume. It wasn't a Nightwing costume. And uh, what... No, I'm, just, I'm just imagining the Batman thing. Robin! Robin! <laughs> That's what people say. Just see him doing this, you know. Um, but what ended up happening with Infinite Crisis is it, they took all their titles... And consolidated the universe by destroying all. It was a major crossover event. They destroyed all of the alternate universes. Mm -hmm. So at the end of it, one consolidated universe. And there were a couple of characters from alternate universes who survived. The most popular ones. And they got to live on the one consolidated Earth. Congratulations, people like you. You get yes. to live. Huntress. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Huntress. Uh, Superman from Earth 2, and then Superboy Prime um, were, I think, the ones who got to survive. And Huntress has this really weird moment where she's like, I'm in a world where my father's alive. Like, this just is a weird. And, you know, Batman doesn't really acknowledge her as a... Because he's not. He's not her his daughter. Yeah, no, he, he, he hasn't had her then. Yeah. Um, and then what happened was they kind of redconned Huntress's continuity. Out of all those characters, the ones that survived, Huntress got redconned. But Superboy Prime and um, was ultimately brought back in the story you're talking about as a villain. Okay. Because in that story, Superboy Prime's like, well, billions of people died. 
you guys are horrible heroes. I want my Earth back. Um, but in the original Crisis, there was this force devouring all these parallel universes. And it was like you had the, the biggest crossover between all the characters having to work together, including the villains, to stop it and save their own universe. Um, right now in the 52, uh, um, Fear, uh, was it Forever Evil is the big crossover event. But the, the villains in those books are the, uh, the crime syndicate. And the, the old characters, they've been around forever, nothing new. Mm -hmm. um, but in that all, crisis on Infinite Earth, they killed the crime syndicate. And there's this great scene with uh, Johnny Quick and Owlman. And Johnny, as their universe is being destroyed, and Johnny Quick says, "If why did God allow us to have these powers if not for the ability to at least save ourselves? And that's the difference between Justice League and, and the crime syndicate. They're always about themselves. Mm -hmm. And Superman, our Superman at the time, was like trying to save all reality yeah. and... Like a Superman do. Yeah. Like a Superman do. <laughs> um, but no, Crisis on Infinite Earth, amazing story. It was the first time I got introduced to DC's Western universe <laughs> with uh, Battler Ash LaRue, Jonah Hex, <laughs> and, and, and those characters. But um, Superboy Prime ultimately came back from that universe and, and became a villain. Um, so they, they've, they've acknowledged their history. DC always does acknowledge their history. 52, I liked the, it, it was brave. I still think it's brave. Was it brave and bold? It was brave and bold, <laughs> yes. Um, but one thing that a lot of people don't realize, in comic books, everyone's late. The end is Spawn 200 took nine months from, it was nine months late. I mean... This entire industry is artists are lazy, and so it's hard. Even if you're paying them to do a job that they love, or claim to love, it's hard to keep consistent books coming out. For three years, DC has not missed a single um, deadline. Nice. So a lot of fanboys out there want to 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 bitch and moan about the 52 and how they've destroyed their own continuity. Who cares? Structurally, they rebooted their universe, and they're giving you consistent material um, without a single delay for three months, for three years. Which is really impressive. I mean, not just you know mm -hmm. for that individual company, but just in general. Like you said, it's one of those things where you know artists are always late for one, one reason or another, and so the fact that they can go three years without one book being late. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. <laughs> no, there are some artists who haven't been too happy with it because they'll say, the artists will be like, well, I'm going to be late on this page and the editorial staff now is the authority to go, no, you won't. Because <laughs> because um, I, they'll they'll just give that page you're going to be late to to another artist. The, the books have been kind of hodgepodge a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's like, guess what? The editorial staff is rocking it. Mm -hmm. You know, for three years, not a single late book. That's it's never happened in, in the entire history of the industry. Um, the late late fee or late is is what pretty much killed Image. At one time, Image was the number one company in the industry, but because they were consistently late and burned um, retailers, they they've never been able to get back on top of the. The, the heap, no matter how good their books are, um, or if their books are good, I don't know because I'm never they're never out on time. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know, would I? No, I, uh, 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 Eric. Oh, I can't remember his last name. He's one of the original seven. He does uh, Savage Dragon. I started reading Savage Dragon uh, a couple of years back, and there was like a four month gap between a couple of issues, I was like, forget this. Like, Jeez. You know, if I'm, as a fan, devoting... If, if I'm going to follow your story, I am pledging to give you at least four bucks a month mm -hmm. out of my pocketbook. If you can't make that deadline, then... 
then I don't care how good the book is. I I have a problem with that as a as a consumer. And then you run the risk of well, maybe your fans don't remember what happened in the previous issue to keep up mentally. Like, no. Like, if I have to buy issue four and then, you know, what's happening? Oh, crap, i got to go back home and read issue three again. <clears throat> and not just for fun, like for research. Right. <laughs> so I remember, you know, who's dead and who's alive. Yeah. Army of Darkness was uh, Dynamite's number one book for a long time, but li- the book coming out late consistently kind of killed the title. Mm-hmm. I remember there was like uh, four or five months in between. Uh, I can't remember what issue it was. But when it showed up in my saver, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm reading this. <laughs> like, I'd totally forgotten about it. Like, you know, and I love those Army of Darkness titles. They're mm-hmm. so well done, so well written. But just, it's, it's, if you're late. You know, I'm a diehard comic book fan, but if I forgot about your book... Yeah, that says something. I, I, it does. And I've been with uh, Army of Darkness forever. I, they just recently rebooted it. Um, because it just... At one point, it, it qualified for a Marvel crossover. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, they did uh, Army of Darkness versus uh, Marvel Zombies. Oh my god. <laughs> It's not as good as it should have been, but no. it it was it was it was it's worth it. Marvel yeah. zombies, hmm, such kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, the whole Marvel zombie universe is is really well done because it's it's literally like the zombie apocalypse took over, but they're still smart, like they really are. Do they shamble? They some of them do. I think it's like there's normal zombies, but because they're super powered. They still oh, have okay. some of their, their normal uh, abilities. And because uh, they're intelligent zombies, they even know how to spell shamble. Shamble. <laughs> well, like, they did Exiles, which I loved that book for a while, but they did an issue of Exiles where they pulled different Wolverines from different universes. Huh. Because Exiles was like this team... It would have been what Guardians of the Galaxy is now. Okay. But they pull all these different Wolverines from these different universes to to do this one job. And they looked at the zombie Wolverine. And he said, when this is done, we can heal you. We can make you a, a normal, you know, normal you again. Mm-hmm. He goes, no. He goes, because that makes me a meal ticket back in my world again. Oh, God, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> that, never, that never occurred to me. Yeah, it's like, no, that, that makes me a lunch. <laughs> But I liked the, the zombie stuff because they brought back in, I think, volume six or seven, they brought back uh, Marvel's um, Sons of, uh, Midnight Sons, the, all the, the whole, it was a horror line of just horror heroes, Blade, oh, Sinister, okay. you know, or not Sinister, uh, uh, Doctor Strange. Hmm. So, um... You at uh, I said this <laughs> Um, you picked up Harley Quinn number zero. I did. Now I I've only looked at it because of the infamous suicide page. I haven't actually gotten my copy yet. Um, what do you think? I really like it. Um, I'm excited to pick up the next. Uh, I've been waiting for Harley Quinn to have her own uh, comic again. For quite a while, and I'm hoping this time it sticks around. And I know she's growing in popularity, so I'm sure that's why they brought it out. But well, Jimmy Pagliotti's a great writer. He mm-hmm. he wrote. Uh, he was one of two teams who, when the Fifty Two reboot happened, because the whole idea was they wanted all new writers, all new artists on the different books. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to say, "Oh, well, we're rebooting the universe with the same titles." And, but there was two teams that carried over from the original uh, line up to the 52, and that was Jimmy Pagliotti's Jonah Hex, and then Grant Morrison's uh, Batman R.I.P. Okay. Um, and so, like, his writing has always been, been strong. And he's a big uh, proponent of uh, indie comics. That's that's always nice when you hear about you know people like 
you know, sticking it for indie companies in general. You know? Well, he, on the side, he runs his own indie company as a publisher. And it's like, okay, you know what you're doing. That's awesome. You know, it's amazing when you hear stories of, of comic book uh, professionals who, like Scott Snyder, he's the big bad Batman writer for the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. He owns his own comic book store. I didn't That's know awesome. that. That's like, really cool. It, it's amazing when you hear stories like he knows what it's like to be a retailer. Yeah. Because the the retail industry in comics is is it's brutal. Um, because as much as I love this industry, it's a uh, um, a luxury item. Mm-hmm. You know, it's fiction. It's good fiction. It is. It's it's not it's not food. It's not shelter. Yeah, unfortunately, it's still you know, like you said. Because even though, uh, I guess it depends on who you're listening to, some say the economy is getting better. I don't know. But, I mean... <laughs> My wages aren't getting better. I know. Seriously. <laughs> but anyway, you know, even if the economy were getting a little bit better, it's still going to be one of the last things people are able to buy. Because mm-hmm. it's, you know, an item that, like you said, it, it's not going to be sheltered. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it might be entertaining. It might take you away from all your problems for a while. But... If it's between that and buying bread, mm-hmm. you know, honestly, you have to choose. But unless you're me, you can't have bread. <laughs> In which case, I'll pick the comic book. Comic books, <laughs> <laughs> bread. Okay, anything that you're not allergic to. <laughs> <laughs> and trick your. So um yeah, I've, I'm brain dead after Thanksgiving. I really am. Oh man, so, I just I want to go to sleep so bad. I still have <laughs> tryptophan running through my system. <laughs> sleep, sleep. Well, we hit two Thanksgivings. And then double. <laughs> double, and then we got up at like five thirty. Five thirty to get ready for today at mm-hmm. IE, which I I might actually go back down there for some of the deals. Um, I don't know. Did you hear, like, what are they doing? Like. Um, I didn't ask anybody what was going on, which is my first mistake. But I, I got to pull it up on my phone because they had different deals running every hour. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So it's like for this hour, this is on sale. For this hour, this is on sale. Yeah, I really want some of the, what are they, they're the DC characters, but they almost look anime. Forget what oh, they're... those, uh, yeah, those, those figures. They're gorgeous. I love them. Um, they actually did a, uh, a book because they did the statues first. Mm-hmm. And the statues were so popular, they, they created a, a book based around mm-hmm. that entire con. It's called Anim, Fe, Anime, Femime, uh, DC Femime or something like that. Yeah. It's all drawn anime style, and it's um, all about the female characters. Mm-hmm. I know they're coming out with a new Harley Quinn one, where she's almost like burlesque and oh. I really want to get that one. I'm so excited. And especially the... the Supergirl one is my favorite because she has a cat on her head, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> super cat. Super cat. Well, they, I think there used to be a super cat. I don't, was. I don't remember. It what. was a tan cat, though, like a, I think. Or am I thinking the TV show Crypto the Super Dog with Flash Cat? <laughs> no, a lot of those. Flash cat. <laughs> Crypto the Super Dog, I've only watched a couple of episodes, but it, I hate to say it's right out of the comics. Yeah. A crypto was a character um, back in the day, and then like the Superman family in the fifties had a flying horse, a dog. <laughs> a I, horse. There's a whole Supergirl movie with the horse. Yeah, oh, I can't remember if there was a cat or not, but I know there was a monkey. <laughs> there was a horse and a monkey, but no cat. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, let's not go crazy here. Quick, name household pets: monkey, <laughs> horse. <laughs> <laughs> Draw them. Give them powers. Was I right? <laughs> but no, Superman went really into that hardcore sci-fi area. Surely everybody has a flying horse. <laughs> it's man's best friend. Flying man's. Flying man's best friend. Mm. Flying alien's best friend. But you know, shows like that when I was little, what really made me get into comic books, you know? You see stuff coming mm. out like that and... Of course, I was reading comic books before I saw the show, but it kept me interested. 
See, because was, I mean, it was the opposite for me. I got into the TV shows first before I got into comics. Mm. Mm. For well, me, it was the Batman. And it's the Superman hard TV to find shows. comics when you're little that you could read without your parents being like, "What are you reading?" That's true. That's very true. Oh, I've had that conversation with my mom because she I was in uh, high school, and a friend lent me a copy of. Uh, Batman Arkham Asylum. Oh. And my mom found it, and it, there's no nudity in Arkham no. Asylum. And she's like, What the hell is this? This is demonic trash. I'm like, It's Batman. It is Batman. <laughs> That's how it was. Um, I, I don't remember what grade I was in, but I brought home Identity Crisis. Oh. And my mom happened to flip open to a certain page that it's just not good. <laughs> that one That one flip. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And she's like, what are you reading? What is this? It's DC, Mom. It's not only is it DC, it's Josh Whedon. It's Josh Whedon. Josh Whedon. Amazing identity crisis. He broke the DC universe with one book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, my God. Identity crisis. So well done. And then, like, Adam is one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. And... Just you feel so much for Ray Palmer in that that story. Um, there's one Adam panel I absolutely love, where he shrunk down to subatomic particles with another guy, and he's sitting on an oxygen molecule. <laughs> and the guy they're talking, he goes, "So we're sitting on an oxygen molecule. Yeah, what are we breathing right now?" <laughs> and the Adam looks at him and goes, "I have no idea." <laughs> it falls through the rainbow. <laughs> but I have no idea. That's awesome. But uh, Adam, just to me, that was always the Adam. And then Identity Crisis, uh-huh. so dark, so in your face. It was just like, whoa. Surprising, very. Yeah. And Dr. Light just uh-huh. all of a sudden went from a joke to. One of the most heinous villains in the industry, or, you know, in the DCU. You have read it, right? I've, I I know what it's about from you, but I've never read the thing myself. Oh. Well, I need to pick those up for you then. Yes, you do. Uh, I got a copy you can probably borrow in the meantime. Oh, cool. Okay. Let me borrow it too. I haven't read it. You haven't oh. read it either. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. It, that's not the only thing new, so. That is nothing new. Yeah. We're, like, we're like half experts here and then half, <laughs> half newbies. <laughs> It's good, though. Which is fine. It gives a fresh perspective to it. What do you mean, half? There's one of me and three of you. <laughs> that's, I'm not very good at math. That's not one half. Don't he doesn't, very he doesn't well. read the comic books all that much. Was, he hasn't until a couple of years ago. I, I, yeah, I started recently, but my past is not filled with comics. It's filled with video games <laughs> and TV series. Yeah, I, I, it's the one time I feel really left out because my past is filled with classics. <laughs> she read books. I read books. Read books. Uh, Those don't even have pictures. <laughs> stupid Javert. There's no Batman in it. <laughs> Count him out of what? <laughs> Gosh, really, why do you, are you I even mean, here? The man in the Iron Man mask. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a nerd as long oh. as I can remember, or even before I could remember, because my dad would say, like, when I was little, I would go on kicks where I would watch Star Wars for about a week and then get bored, and then I would watch Planet of the Apes and get oh. bored. And like I think every week. kid does that, like with their mm. own thing. See, it was because Ghostbusters for me. <laughs> for me, oh, I watched that too. Like I would go through, like you know, like so I said, I'd go through my phases where I'd pick something and I just would like, beat it to death, <laughs> yeah. basically watching it for like a month. Like I think I went through a Peter Pan phase. <laughs> I went through a. Um, Actually, I stayed in that Peter Pan phase because I would then I switched to Hook. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know, I watched that thing like till the tape almost was coming apart. <laughs> you know, so it's like I, I would watch different. That's you how know, my Jurassic Park tape is. <laughs> really, Jurassic Park? I love Jurassic Park. Actually, one of my all-time favorite movies. I have a giant blanket in my room of Jurassic Park. Oh, and I feel bad because I've only seen that like. Once. Do you want to borrow the three DVD set with that special features? <laughs> well, I will. One and two are the only ones worth watching, and two only kind of. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you! Raptor replies by looking at her. <laughs> hey, you. What? <laughs> what? I know English. Jurassic <laughs> uh, Park, it, I, I can't really say anything bad about it, but it just didn't really... 
It was good enough to spawn comics. Yeah. I actually I collect the comics. So. Yeah, it just uh, I know Samuel L. Jackson only took the role because he wanted a toy. Nice. Like he he wanted an action figure. But see, I'll I like say, dinosaurs. Uh, going back to it, I was like, I always feel like there's a whole bunch of things like I missed as a kid that everyone else is like, oh my gosh, you've never seen this, or oh my gosh, you never read this. I'm just like, <laughs> where was I? Like, <laughs> what was I doing that I missed this, this, and this? Yeah. You know, like all my friends are like major comic book people. I'm like. How did I not know about comics till I got older? Like, know. you know, yeah. or, you know, like just in general, you know. I feel like I missed the boat. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's like I was just probably over here dancing, doing circles, and I the was, comic book boat yeah. left, and I was I just was playing left. Earth Bye. Jam, I was like, and I got bread. lost. Yeah. Everyone was yeah. like, Bye. I'm like, where are those people going? <laughs> a wonderful place. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the, I get that, like, a lot. Not just comic books, but, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, movies or this or that. I mean, uh, the first time, uh, like back when Brand and I got first got together, uh, he and Chrissy started talking about pa- um, Power Rangers, mm-hmm. and I knew of Power Rangers, but I never watched it. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like I never watched it. I, I I know there's a pink Power Ranger and a yellow Power Ranger. That's all I know. No, I, 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 <laughs> it's just those two colors. Just those two colors. <laughs> no, 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 no green, no blue, none. I I love that show as a kid. I recently, just out of nostalgia, put on the first episode. I turned it off like after five minutes. I know it's so. It's, it's just it's unbearable. It's if you don't have the mind of a six-year-old, you can't watch it. <laughs> no, but then it's funny. Like then I'll start watching. Like um, people will bring up stuff like Clue. I'm like, oh my gosh, I watched that when I was six. Yeah. I, I, you know, and then people are like. What 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 what? <laughs> you know? Where were your parents? How? Did this, <laughs> what kind of ne- neglectful parent would let you watch this movie? I know. Oh, seriously, this was like I shouldn't have watched as a kid. Oh, I, I there was. Um, I watched Van Helsing as a kid. Van Helsing. I like. I love Van Helsing. Yeah. I, um, bigger fan of Solomon Kane though. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember being a kid. And watching like uh, Frankenstein, the Boris Karloff one. Oh, yeah. That's still terrifying. It really, mm-hmm. really is. Well, I, that's one of the reasons why I like the classic, you know, Universal monster movies because it's like some of those you still watch and you're like, holy crap! Yeah. You know, you you know, look outside. There isn't a giant monster coming yeah. after me, is there? You know. I recently had Lewis watch uh, Poltergeist for the first time. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, it was yeah. so good. Again, I, I wasn't another expecting one. much because to me, a lot of the movies from earlier times, like that. I don't know, the, the special effects kind of get me, but this one, it was so practical, and even when they did go to CGI, it was just, it was believable enough to where I was going, what the fuck, what the, what happened, <laughs> no, <laughs> it was, it was so amazing, I loved it. Oh man, I, uh, I, that's one I've been kind of thinking about seeing eventually, but <laughs> see, the thing is, with me, I'm a chicken, like, I am a really bad, mm-hmm. bad Bad chicken, like for, for like a pseudo scary ghost movie, it is genuinely frightening at yeah. times. Like it's one of those things where I have to watch it like Pulky either guys, it, obviously not ghosts. So. I have to watch it either in the daylight or I have to watch it with all the lights on. Yeah. I can't, you know, if I watch it before I go to bed, I'm like Brandon, you're coming to bed with me, yeah. and I'm not going because there will be something under my bed that's gonna eat me. I've been watching scary movies since I was seven. My mom would do laundry and she would be watching uh, like. Halloween, she'd be like, Sarah, come see this, you'll love it. Mm. See, I watched Terminator wow, your mom's 2 very proper. I was like 10 years old, and that was probably a mistake. <laughs> Terminator 2 is a great, like, boy action movie, yeah. it really is. <laughs> but, like, there's scenes where it's so bloody, and, like, the, the things that happen are so dark. I don't remember like, that in Terminator 2, I remember that in Terminator. Yeah, in Terminator. Well, like, a dark. guy gets stabbed through the face, through the milk carton, and then through the face in Terminator 2. <laughs> Which is impossible, I think. Mm. I know. That's just a thing. Well, there's a robot from the future. True. So. Okay. Anything is possible yeah, with a robot from the future. A, a liquid robot from the future. <laughs> a liquid robot. Mm. See, I was always my mom's Miss, you know, Happy Christmas lady. So <laughs> Happy I, I watched Christmas. like from a young age. I was like watching musicals. I was mm. watching, you know, that kind I of stuff. I found musicals on my own. That was you know, my own special. And so thing. it's like mm. by the time I'm seven, I'm quoting Sister Act. <laughs> <laughs> Two people were like, and what was funny is, I think probably by the time I was about eight or nine, I'd memorized all the songs from um, 
Man of La Mancha. Uh. And which was a great film. I think, you know, everybody should watch it. Peter O'Toole was amazing. And what was funny was I didn't understand some of the context of the songs. The one that the woman sings about she'll sleep with any man. <laughs> I did, like, she says it in such a way that, you know, I didn't realize that's what she was talking about at yeah. nine years old. My mom's like, please don't sing that outside the house. <laughs> you know, she's like, I'm like, why? She's like, well, just don't. It's not something that, yeah. you know, it's not a good thing that, you know. But, like, so it's kind of, my mom had this kind of mixed, like, fascination and <laughs> glad that I was getting to musicals. But she's like, that particular song you might not want to sing in front of people because people will think I'm a bad parent. <laughs> yeah, at that age, I was quoting like every movie I'd ever seen, especially The Mummy. Mm-hmm. Oh. You know, so I'll just quote The Mummy all the time. Oh, what, what's her face? A song from Oklahoma is like awful. <laughs> oh, that used to be my favorite song Which to sing one? when I was little. <laughs> the I Can't Say No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I... I, somewhere on VHS, I have a copy of Hugh Jackman's performance. Really? Oh my gosh, I've always wanted oh, to have that. Cool. I have the movie, the Oklahoma movie on VHS, but I don't have Hugh Jackman's performance is amazing. It is amazing. He's a, he's I've seen lots of clips. Yeah, he's a great stage actor. He should stay the frick away from yeah, Wolverine. Not the best Wolverine. Okay, I, thank you. I thought I was the only person who was like, that's not Wolverine. He looks nothing like Wolverine. He's not short. If you and take s- Wolverine's backstory and his mythos and kind of put it in the trash can, then he makes a good Wolverine. But he's not short. He's not, like... He, Thick build. It's not... No, no. I mean, Wolverine is supposed to be, like, not the opposite of... Um, uh, Scott Summers, but different enough to where they're not the same damn person. Yeah, he's 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 like five three, five three, French Canadian. Yeah, um, two hundred and some odd pounds. I think three hundred because of the adamantium. Mm-hmm. Um, got to count for the adamantium. Got to count for the. I was telling Maylene, uh, Wolverine Origins, one of the mm-hmm. greatest Wolverine comics ever. It is basically Weathering Heights because it is a love story. With uh, that takes place around Wolverine when he's six and seven, and you know you have this Tom Sawyer Huckleberry Finn thing going. It's Withering Heights, is what it really is. Now uh, the kids and the adults and the love affairs and all this kind of stuff, and it gets bloody near the end. Mm-hmm. And I understand not wanting to do an exact interpretation of that story for the movie. But can we at least acknowledge that shit mm-hmm. happened? Yeah. <laughs> you know, to just scan right over it and to even put it in the wrong country. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's one thing we were talking about. Like, some of the changes are just random changes. Like, why would you decide to go from France to Canada? Yes, you know, there are a lot of French sections in Canada, mm-hmm. you know. But still, that's just kind of... Who made that decision to yeah. go from one country to another, you know? It was a shock to learn, if you read Wolverine Origins... It was a shock to learn Wolverine wasn't born in Canada. Mm-hmm. I get that. Um, he is the quintessential Canadian superhero. Blame Canada. But <laughs> blame, blame Canada. Canada. <laughs> but it was part of the story, and it's really well done. It's a really good story. And I felt like, okay, you can start with the Wolverine Origins novel, or that this sort, and then go into the Weapon X graphic novel that Frank Miller mm-hmm. wrote. That's That would have been a great movie. The Wolverine Origins movie that we <sighs> did get was so disrespectful to the source material, mm-hmm. I didn't even watch the last movie. It was disrespectful to many source materials. <laughs> you yeah. can't have Deadpool be mute. It was disrespectful to the blog. I didn't get that one either. Yeah. Like, you know, that, it was Ryan Reynolds. He's hilarious. I only caught bits and pieces. That was a brand. Like, no, I'm not going to let you watch it. No. Nope. <laughs> like, I, you. I caught bits and pieces and scenes here and there. And when I saw Ryan Reynolds, I'm like, okay, he, I could see him being a Deadpool. And well, then, he's funny. He's sarcastic. And then, you know, like, the, the whole thing with him not to be, I'm like, they're joking, right? <laughs> They're kidding, right? Maybe they were afraid he was going to steal the show or something. Well, even Which so. Which would have. And it would have been <laughs> good. And right. Deadpool's that kind of character. That. Yeah. De- I mean, that's the kind of character he is. I mean, if when, you need a comic, Deadpool's, yeah. you know, mouthing off. And yeah. he think it's hysterical. You're like, wait, I want that guy to come back. Deadpool featuring the origin story of Wolverine. <laughs> 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 when they did um, uh, Hulk versus uh, Wolverine. Mm-hmm. And they did Deadpool in that that movie, which Deadpool technically didn't fit into what they were doing, but they shoehorned him in there. Deadpool stole every single mm-hmm. scene 
And even at the end, I don't know, have you seen it? Mm-mm. Oh, it's no. so funny. It's only 45 <laughs> minutes. So I'll have to bring it over. <laughs> at the very end of it, Deadpool uh, survived this explosion. Of course. And it's at the very end of the credits, Deadpool stands out of this rubble and he goes, I'm alive! In, middle, in the middle of his sentence, the Hulk comes crashing down and squashes it. Bah! <laughs> 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 screams and jumps off. <laughs> <laughs> like, huh. <"I'm> alive! <laughs> uh, one of my Deadpool. favorite things, I don't remember which one it was, but uh, Deadpool's talking about, you know, finding B. Arthur very attractive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forget which one of that one it was. It was one of the, the trades, I have that, yeah. Yeah, he's like, oh my god, you know, B. Arthur, she's so hot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's near death, he's actually, this was after B. Arthur had passed away and he's dying, he's fine. <laughs> And like he's flashing on B. Arthur, he's like, I'll finally be with you, my love. <laughs> and you're still like, that's disturbing. And I don't know how to respond to that. Like, I just, I believe that they had a relationship at one time. <laughs> well, if anyone's going to have a relationship with B. Arthur, it's going to be Deadpool. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. He had his own video game just this last year, I think, is when it came out. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't have a next-gen or, these days, previous-gen system, but it's supposed to be really fun and really hilarious. I, I watched a playthrough just to see some of the uh, the cutscenes mm-hmm. and stuff. It was pretty funny. I don't, <laughs> I don't have the time to sit there and play a game anymore. Um, uh, eventually, I'll get back to the Xbox one day. One day. One day. Um, I want to play Batman Origins, but I don't even have time for that. Mm-hmm. But it's just they did this amazing job with um, uh, capturing the... Sen- they, they did a really good job of showing his split personalities because they have, in the comics, they have uh, two simultaneous um, thought boxes going on. Mm-hmm. So they actually, there are three different voices playing Deadpool. Oh, that's cool. And it's just like, whoa, okay. And it shows, like, uh, one of the voices is a British, uh, has a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Deadpool. And so it's just like, I can see Deadpool having a British accent running through his head. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> well, see, I have a friend, Gina, who is ridiculously christian like scary religious and she goes to a a religious school and i told her she needs to get into comic books and of course she was very reluctant at first but i gave her a deadpool comic and told her start reading because she enjoys like tumblr so i'm like all right tumblr's kind of deadpool so (laughs) here try this and uh reading through it she's enjoying it and she's like i didn't realize who he is behind like his character behind the mask you know like I don't see how someone with his past could be who he is, and so it's fun. It's cool to see people have their new reactions to characters, rather than just seeing them in like random clips or knowing about their personality, but knowing also their backstory. Well, it's like you know I haven't read the Harry Potter films or the books, mm-hmm. but it's like I know if I watch the if I watch the movies after reading the novel. I get a fuller sensation of who these characters are. Mm -hmm. Same thing with comics. If Mm -hmm. I read, you know, the backstory of these characters, like I, I have a hard time watching Arrow, the 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 new show, um, because it's nothing like the the Arrow from the comics. Was that still on the air? Hmm. All right. (laughs) It it is, and I'm I'm hopeful it does well because I want, I rather just him transfer over the actor playing Arrow. Uh, transfer over into the Justice League movie. Mm-hmm. It makes everything seamless, and you know I'm I'm fine with that. But for my money, that is not the Oliver Queen I know and love from the comic. Well, uh, see, that goes back to what we were saying earlier. You know, I mean, sometimes it is better to watch the movie or the TV show or whatever before you read the source material because mm-hmm. then you're not as offended. Then you're like, oh, okay, I I you know, feel, you know um, the few times when I've actually liked you know, like a film adaptation and the book or material theory was when I watched the movie first. Mm -hmm. And then I read whatever it was based off afterward. You know, um, I I think there was only two or three of those where I I liked both. And it was never the other way around. I never read a book or a comic book or anything 
and then watched this, you know, movie or TV show and thought it was amazing, you know, kind yeah. of thing. It's yeah. like, it was always the other way around. Well, it's like one of the few exceptions to that, um, and where they are so perfectly linked that you can just pick one up or the other, is Scott Pilgrim vs. Yeah. the World. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I recently watched a documentary, or not a documentary, I listened to an interview with the director. Um, and they were talking about how they would actually bring the artist who drew the, the comic mm-hmm. book. Because he's an artist. Yeah. So he drew, like, in the characters in the background, he'd draw a Punisher shirt yeah. as a little end joke for the book. They had him come in and draw the Punisher skull so that they could put his skull on a shirt for one of the background extras. Well, and and the um, the shirt that Scott wears, like the SP Heart shirt, mm-hmm. that's in the it's in the, the graphic novels, I think. Yeah, almost all the shirts he wears, really. Yeah, so I mean, there was so much like somebody was analyzing the book with a telescope, mm-hmm. and then going, "Okay, that's a Punisher shirt. We don't we need his Punisher logo because they could have just gotten one from Marvel or whatever, yeah. Yeah. but they they." So it represented his art. It's like uh, Dave Gibbons, who did The Watchmen. Um, they had him go around the set and actually do some of the graffiti in the background. That's cool. You know, of, of the, the Watchmen set. And it's just like, the, you know, it, it, it was based off of his art. He's yeah. the artist, you know. it's it's. I, I love in uh, Scott Pilgrim when you get the P-bar and it goes to empty. <laughs> yeah. Look at my favorite parts. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, I think, is a, a very underrated comic. I mean, mm-hmm. everyone knows the movie. Everyone, But the comic books are just... The comics are hilarious. I think like, of Volume 1... A little while ago, I um, it's on my to be read file, but I have it and I know it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> I just some of the panels are just the most amazing, simple things. Like when he's in the bed and there's no Ramona, and it just captions it like no Ramona. Look over him, no heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, oh god. Uh, it, it's really well done. I um, they've actually just recently re- uh, brought Scott Pilgrim back with a sequel. Oh. Uh, in the comics called mm-hmm. Scott Pilgrim versus the Universe. Or versus the Apocalypse. That's what it is. Scott Pilgrim versus the Apocalypse. And the, I've only seen the cover of the first volume. It's him on this mountain and it looks like a zombie apocalypse has occurred. <laughs> and he's holding the sword from the first movie and it's broken. Oh. And he's got like a beard and he's just like, <laughs> like he's, you know, just been through shit. <laughs> I have to pick that uh, up. <laughs> well, uh, we're, we're heading into the, the top of the hour here. Um, okay, well, before we uh, sign off, why don't we just go around really quick and um, talk about what we're reading. Yeah, what we're reading. We'll start with you. Well, as we said earlier, I'm reading the new Harley Quinn. <laughs> <Yeah>. Puddin'. Puddin'. <laughs> Puddin'. By this point, he probably is. <laughs> that, was the, that joke took me for years to actually figure out. It's from the DC and the uh, Batman Superman crossover. And the, there's a giant robot plane that actually blew up with the Joker on it. And Batman got Harley Quinn out. And um, the huge ball of fire. And Harley Quinn's in Batman's arms parachuting down. She goes, Puddin! And Batman just goes, at this point, he probably is. <laughs> oh, my <God>. oh, my God. <laughs> oh, 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 crap. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, he probably, oh, my God. At this point, he probably is. Like, just went right over my head as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> How do you turn into a brain? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> as far as reading goes, that's what I'm working on. I'm very excited and hopeful. Mm. Um, I have a huge backlog of comics I need to to, to get through. Mm-hmm. Um, I have in my to read pile uh, like four or five issues of Ghostbusters, like eight or nine issues of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, darn! Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm so far back behind because. And kill myself getting ready for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. It was on Cyber Monday we're doing a free giveaway downloadable comic. Um, 
on the website, and so I've just been trying to kill myself, or kill myself just trying to get that stuff to work properly. Um, I'm not the biggest IT tech guy, you know. I can draw, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't make some of this stuff work, but uh, I, I know how to computer. <laughs> I know how to computer. Um, so I got a lot of uh, back back reading. I got I got to pick up on um, one book that I've been reading just because I'm friends with the the writer, um, it, writer and artist is uh, Laramie Taylor's uh, Voice in the Dark. Mm. Number one just came out from Top Cow, um, and I've been helping him out a little bit with. Uh, because he, he's in a wheelchair, and his wheelchair broke on him a couple months back. So I was helping him out with some errands and stuff. But uh, he's back on, you know, the chairs fixed and stuff. But uh, um, really cool book. It's disturbing as hell because it's literally about a female Dexter. Um, <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's pretty twisted, but uh, it, 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 I don't know where it's going. And I know some stuff from talking to Laramie, kind of where it's going. <laughs> and uh, well, it, it'll be pretty. It's going to be an interesting, interesting read. So uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, I am finishing up Superman for all seasons. Um, hopefully, I'll be finishing up Dark Knight Returns as well. Uh, getting ready to start Batman Hush as well as Nightfall Volume One. Uh, I guess I'm on a huge Batman kick right now. <laughs> okay, you're just missing Court of Owls. And yeah, then no, you, I'm just missing, yeah, yeah. Then you got the full full <laughs> kabang right there. We have a Court of Owls, uh, Max. I can't, I can't wait until I can afford to pick up the uh, the collections of uh, the New 52 Batman, where it's like Court of Owls and then Talon's story. I just, I don't know. It, it seems like a really nice way to take care of a new Batman, like, the natural predator, the owl, like that's crazy. <laughs> it is so real. Like the the way Scott Snyder is talking about the story was like, you know, he, he he really pulled the Frank Miller and just pulled the rug out from underneath the hero because mm -hmm. Batman was at this place where it's like I know my city, I know yeah. um, everything there is to know, and all of a sudden there's this cult that's been running in Gotham since going back to Jonah Hex era. That there was a Jonah Hex tie-in. With the Court of Owls stuff. And so it was just like, whoa. And then all of a sudden, Batman, you know, doesn't know his city. Yeah. I love it when you can take a big hero like that, someone who's confident and sure of himself, and then suddenly he's afraid. Yeah. <laughs> like, it makes him dig deeper, and it changes who he is and who he sees himself as. Well, in Batman uh, Night's Fall, before he came back as Batman... Mm -hmm. There's this great scene where he's on one of the skyscrapers on Batman. He's like, when I first put on the mask, this is the building I used to test myself. Because when I step off this ledge, I fall this much, you know, at this distance. I hit maximum speed at this distance, and I only have one. He's like, I only have three seconds to launch the grappling hook to this point mm -hmm. to swing before hitting the concrete. And after his Bane broke his back, he looks down and goes, I'm not ready. <sighs> God. You know, he's like, yeah. I, you know, and of course, by the end of the series, he does, yeah. yeah. but like, he keeps going back to that ledge. He's like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> oh, God. Well, um, I, I currently put a stop in what I was reading because recently, um, I've been trying to get Brandon into the Harry Potter books. <laughs> like, I've been really trying. It's been my Keep trying. goal to get him to read the books. <laughs> Well, we've both been so busy lately, just, you know, this, that, and the other thing keep kind of popping up. So, originally we said, okay, we're going to read them together, and, you know, maybe like a chapter a night or something, we're just going to sit down, you and me, and it never happened, <laughs> you know, it just kind of, you know, life kind of happened. So, what I started doing was, I know he likes to listen to podcasts, you know, he listens to a lot of um, Kevin Smith at night. You know, sometimes when he stays up late, he'll just listen to podcasts while he's drawing or whatever. Mm -hmm. So recently, I've actually been um, recording the chapters, you know, of Harry Potter. I'm on the first book right now, recording it chapter by chapter so that he can listen to it. Broke man's book on tape. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can't afford the real books on tape. Oh, no, no, yeah, the, the Pottermore books are, they're beautiful, but geez. I know, it's like, you know, two broke people, <laughs> you yeah. know, so we, I've just been recording it myself, you know, so that... 
whenever he just gets a chance, he can just mm -hmm. listen to a few chapters here and there, and that way, you know, it's one of those things where we don't have to buy it, but at the same time, he can still enjoy it. Yeah. You know? I remember hearing this story back when book six dropped about this girl who had, like, one copy, and she wanted to let her friend borrow it, but she didn't want to let her friend borrow the book or something like that. Yeah. So she took the time to write out Harry Potter book six and to, like, like seven or eight different spiral down notebooks, just transcribing it and then giving the notebooks to a friend. Wow! It was. It, it takes dedication to do That's that good. kind of stuff. Like photocopy wasn't an option. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just we got too suspicious when she's going nee nee, you know, <laughs> put it on photocopier nee nee. Like that technology is from the seventies. It's know. not all that very new. <laughs> <laughs> you can fax it. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so, all right, we're, we're wrapping things up. Anyone want to plug anything? Uh, get your plug in now. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, if anyone uh, is interested in watching. Recently did a Doctor Who tag. So a couple questions on there for Whovians. Uh, it's the Dewey Bet at, uh, at YouTube. Um, I, too, have a YouTube channel, and I'm in talks with take two games in order to figure out the legalities behind doing a let's play of some other stuff so uh i would like to do that if possible it's a peaceful pagoda so that should be fun i've been meaning to ask you what peaceful pagoda because that's also all your twiddle, yeah, twitter twitter um, handle and it's just a name that wasn't taken <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean I, I googled it and there was no website park there was no twitter handles or, or facebook <laughs> handles that had it and i was like all right i'll, I'll be peaceful pagoda Why not? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you're like i would have just taken whatever they gave me <laughs> I, I didn't want to be you know gamer dude 1329 x like it, no <laughs> I want something a bit more memorable than that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, and then uh, of course Cyber Monday coming up. Uh, DestinyComics.wix.com/slash/comics. We do have a URL, a better URL, official URL that's coming um, here real soon. So, for that you've been listening to at the table, not the live show, <laughs> um, because we got rained on. But this was a fun podcast. Not rain on my parade. <laughs> the following podcast was a production by Destiny Comics, sponsored by DestinyComics.wix.com slash comics. Recorded live in Hemet, California. Produced by executive producer Michael Sanders. A special thanks to any and all guests who participated in the previous podcast. This concludes our broadcasting hour. Thank you.